Hello, hello everyone and welcome to Divine Day Boo 11. This is Kathy and the messenger is here today, the 13th of August. I hope that you're all doing well. Um, 13th of August and coming up to those big uh, astrological events that uh, are happening now in the month of August, a very, very important month, astrologically speaking, of 2024. Okay, the moon is transiting, has just stepped into Sagittarius, has left Scorpio, and of course we know Sagittarius is a Jupiter ruled sign, and Jupiter is with uh, Mars in Gemini, and coming up to that big uh, first quarter square um, from Saturn in Pisces. So we've been talking about the astrology a fair bit especially those of you on patreon you're more aware about what's going on uh, others of you are doing your research um, on youtube that's fine as long as you have an idea of what's going on astrologically happy birthday if you are celebrating your birthday today um deep my dear leos um there is there are some nice opportunities um, uh, at this time as well um, connected with the moon so emotionally it could be a, a day of happiness let's say you know the moon is transiting through Jupiter's sign so a lot of uh, travel a lot of uh, expansion growth some happiness some getting out there doing some traveling doing some research some some good news relative to wisdom philosophy education okay so there are some good op opportunities at this time um but we're coming up to difficult aspects so let's see what the karma dharma is today what does the messenger bring us dear spirit what is that we need to know today um, some of you could be expecting visitors like i am uh, someone that's from in interstate or from overseas, um, moon in Sagittarius, right? We've got the Empress here, and the Empress is beautiful, absolutely beautiful. This is Venus, Venus, which rules Taurus and Libra. Taurus is resources, and Libra is relationships, justice. So... Some of you may have been waiting on something that you're creating to be birthed. Could be a love connection, could be a grandchild for some of you. She does look like a grandmother, does she not? She's holding that little uh, newborn baby. So whatever it is that you're giving birth to, I mean, it's a time of harvest. It's a time of um, manifestation with the Empress. Venus. Venus right now is in Virgo and she is a little bit stingy uh, but she's promising to deliver as she's going to enter Libra, her home sign, at the end of August. So we're going over a hump right now. Uh, love is, uh, we're trying to perfect things where money love is concerned. Uh, we know the Empress is about patience so maybe that's what Spirit is asking of us today. So let's see what's going on the Empress, remember, she is about creativity. She is about uh, balance, harmony, peace, pleasure. All these things speak to Venus. Let's see what's going on. There's some sort of... Because uh, she's a three, and threes are about expansion. Some sort of success in something, but at the early stages. Some of you could be waiting on that end of the month. Um, a lot is changing because uh, Venus has been in square with Uranus from Uranus from Taurus. Remember, Venus rules Taurus. She has been in a square with Taurus, and at the end of the month, she's going to trine Taurus. But I think there's a lot of clearing out, a lot of reckoning to be done before that happens because Uranus in Taurus at those last degrees is with our goal, Medusa. Okay, and that's the uh, female gone wrong, let's say, for whatever reason. Um, remember Medusa uh, was raped by Neptune and punished by goddess Athena. 
So there are some injustices, right? And uh, our goal is about um, being beheaded, someone losing their position. Um, Venus squaring over to Uranus um, is sudden changes, adjustments that need to be made, some shocking revelations maybe that you've had recently. Something to do with breaking free. Okay, so let's see what's going on. What does the messenger bring us today? As we know, Uranus is also the internet, so that could be through messaging, through information, through having that bird's eye view. What's going on today? We've got the emperor. Well, that's a good one. The empress and the emperor. This could be a partnership. It could be a love connection. Um, there could be a birthing or an offering, a creative offer that's coming from... Um, well, the empress is more the, uh, the the yin energy. The emperor would be the yang energy. But the emperor gives us a sense of uh, security, a sense of stability, uh, safety, right? Um, the emperor being Aries, Taurus, could be any sign. But the emperor does speak to stability, matters to do with the home, the family. These could be parents. These could be grandparents. This could be a partner. This could be a boss, someone who's in a leadership position. Um, there could also be acknowledgement of what the, emp the, the Empress can, the Empress provides or offers through her love, nurturing, patience, her ability to create her powerful persona because she is, she is the four queens in the Empress, right? Um, and there could be something to do with an actual child. If this is not something that we're creating, it could be relative to a child or a birthing, whatever that means. Okay, so let's see what's going on. We've got a nine of cups, a wish fulfillment, and it's a wonderful, wonderful card, the nine of cups. Okay, this is about pleasures. This is about doing things that make me happy, that make me feel good. And that's what Taurus is as well. But there could also be something to do with information, a lot of communication, anything to do with quick, quick communication, anything legal, anything connected to information. That's connected to the past, but that's going to catapult us towards the future. Why? Because Mercury is retrograding in the sign of Virgo, its home sign, where Venus is as well. And... Venus is also very nurturing, motherly, and uh, patient, let's say. But as Mercury is going to go back into Leo, the, the energies are going to start to, uh, they're going to start to get stronger. As uh, we know, Leo is powerful. It's about confidence. It's about um, that inner child. It's about what we're creating, what we're willing to take a risk to, to create, let's say. We've got, wow, we've got the Seven of Swords. So something is going to be revealed, let's say. Something to do with hidden matters, hidden information, secrecy, theft as well, which could be literal, doesn't have to be. Um, the Seven of Swords is the thief that's trying to get away. Uh, and we see that somehow we can see here because uh, as we know the Emperor... The emperor could also be someone that's trying to control a situation if the emperor is not someone that's there to provide the service or the security or the protection for you. Uh, this could be someone that's trying to control a situation within their life relative to, as I said, something that's being birthed relative to a love connection, a partnership in business as well. But I feel that there will be revelations here. Someone's going to get unveiled, uh, caught out in, in the act or um, because Mercury retrograde is like looking over details. So maybe uh, some information in the little details relative to Mercury retrograding and then we could possibly see the bigger picture where, because Leo is ruled by the sun, right? There's nothing hidden under the sun. Let's see. Wow. Okay. Well, we've got a reverse card, which is not common. Six of Wands is in the reverse. So I get a little bit of 
uh, conflict here because the six of wands would go back to the five. So conflictual energies, uh, seven and a, a seven and a five, they're not easy energies. Um, but of course, the six of wands in the upright would speak would speak to success, recognition. So I get a little bit of um, embarrassment here. Uh, someone having a bit of a remorse relative to secrets from the past, things being found out. Um, and again, this could be connected to a business because there could also be conflict with others if if this is not a family situation um, because it goes back to the five of wands, which could be a, a team or a family situation. It could be internal, external conflict. Right, but the Six of Wands for me says that we're not quite there yet. So there's still the conflict, the battle, the changes that are happening. Give me more information on that Seven of Swords, please. We've got the Wheel of Fate. Jupiter does speak the truth. Jupiter does bring justice. It's like going back to the past and retweaking, re-looking at a situation, maybe having missed some details that have put us in a bit of hot water, or not feeling safe, secure, happy, stable, um, even trusting, we could say. But the Wheel of Fate is a 10, it is an ending, it's divine timing that something needs to be seen um, that's going to come out of the blue, because these are really fast energies. The Knight of Swords, uh, Aquarius, Gemini or Libra, and uh, yeah, through communication, uh, co cooperation, looking at the little details, things could start to um, come through. That may bring a, a hope for some successful venture situation in the future and recognition. Let's see why, why do we have the Six of Wands and why was it in the reverse? We've got the Four of Swords, so someone needs time. Someone needs to to relax. Someone needs to take some time out to heal, to uh, go inwards because it's been an uphill battle, I'm going to say. The Four of Swords is someone needs, I mean, this is the warrior coming from war and there's this hurt feelings, there's physical hurt, there's emotional, mental hurt in the Four of Swords inaction which also says a lack of communication this is probably going to change because there's like frustration here and i get a knee-jerk uh sudden uh shift right which can happen for many of us seven of swords could also be someone that's checking out your social media let's say right someone getting caught out or someone doing their homework on past, I don't know, even looking at past messages and figuring something out with the ability of Mercury retrograde and taking some time out to think about it. Let's take one more on the Four of Swords. And we've got the lovers. Jeez. Jeez. Louise. Jeez, Louise. The lovers, Gemini energy. And of course, Jupiter and Mars. Jupiter, that is the adventure that is the wisdom, is the information, the uh, having the that bird's eye view, right? The intelligence, and Mars, the uh, the passion, the drive, the will. Um, yes, they're wanting to go move forward on what it is they're wanting to create, and we've all got Gemini somewhere in our chart, but they're being they're being forced to wait from Saturn in Pisces. So someone needs to, needs that they need their time. Could be months, could be days, could be weeks for others of you. The timing will be different. The lovers is a head over heart decision. It's many times a twin flame connection, but could be a partnership in business as well. Let's not rule that out. So decisions, decisions here. And we've got the world card. So maybe there's also because Jupiter can also speak to an ending. Jupiter can speak to legalities and justice, but time is necessary here. Decisions need to be made. 
the possibility of this birth, and this could also be a legal legal action for the um, um, and relative to who's going to have uh, the child, who's going to uh, be able to take care of this child, and it could be uh, it could be let's say anything um, legal battles. Um, the, the actual parents from the grandparents, it could be uh, the mother from the father, it could be many, many things. We see the world card here, which is logically, it is a card of accomplishment. Now, of course, um, foreigners, foreign places, uh, long distance countries and people who reside far away come into the picture with the world card. We also see Venus. Venus in the womb here. She's ready to be birthed. Remember, the Empress says, wait. Um, so, interesting. Interesting, interesting. And this is also a closing up of a major cycle. We've got the Magician, so Mercury is playing a major role here. Yes, we've got strong Gemini. Uh, Virgo comes through as well. We've got the four fixed signs, so Leo, Aquarius, Scorpio, and um, and Taurus, and we're coming up to a full moon on the 19th. Today is the 13th, so in a, in about a week, a difficult, a difficult full moon. And we've got an Ace of Wands, so there's a very strong desires, possibility for the light coming on the light bulb. Look at the look at the the lightning on his head so this is like the information is coming from the alignment of the stars remember the full moon is going to be in aquarius aquarius is ruled by uranus and that full moon is squaring over to uranus in taurus so bright ideas um, of how to detach how to break free ingenious thoughts for new beginnings remember we've got two aces here but something also needs to complete before this new beginning can take place this is also a very strong card of desire creativity it's an opportune moment that's coming in so that we could close up this cycle and give birth to whatever it is that we love because this is venus right and uh, temperance is saying be patient sagittarius comes through very strongly major arcanas very important major major cards here what's beneath temperance we've got the uh, equal giving and receiving six of pentacles payback karmic payback dharma karma um six of pentacles is you're waiting on money you're waiting on reciprocity you're waiting on a return on a decision on a choice that someone's making here beautiful i want to see what the advice is thank you spirit what is the advice with the energy oracle what does spirit advise us today the 13th of august 13th of August, 1-3, that's number four, which is the emperor, something to do with home, stability, security, past matters, where we reside, uh, cancer comes through as well, something to do with movement, a change of home, um, a change of residence, uh, Um, anything to do with motherhood, uh, pregnancy as well, yeah. Let's see what's what what is the message today? And we've got journey, wow, and it's a number two. What a beautiful card where it shows the it shows the signs, um, the signposts are showing us the way. This is like a like uh, um, being on the road, going on that adventure. You could see she's she's got her suitcases, but it's a two which can speak to difficult choices, dilemmas about a physical or a metaphorical journey. But, you know, you could see that her path is all lit up. She's checking with spirit and the signpost that she's on on her way, on the right path as well. But, of course, this speaks to a decision. And of course, because it's a two, it's not only up to us, 
Um, well, it could be our mind versus our heart, right? If uh, it's our decision only. Let's see where our psyche is concerned at this point. What is what is necessary to know? This could be a journey that uh, that's begun end of 2020 and will complete uh, roughly in uh, June next year for some of you. That's um, what's playing out astrologically speaking. Let's look at the emotions and the psyche on the 13th of August. Well, what a surprise, my beautiful girl. She was under the table having a nice nap. And hello, Agape Mu. Family, communication, telepathic communication, physical communication. Mm. Uh huh. And the observer, I did talk about someone checking out someone's social media. This does bring up the Aquarius energy for me. We've got the Divine Feminine. She can feel that she's being, she's being uh, looked at. She's being um, checked out. Let's say, Agape. And we've got a fresh start, which is like the Ace of Wands. Right? This is an offering here. This could be something that you may have uh, intuitively felt that something is coming. This could speak to stability and something is has been seeded and is going. We see the, the little sprout here, right? And I'm not going to touch the cards because when she's in a sleepy mood... Um, she can she can grab for you she can scratch you it's like she gets scared and it's a rebound so oh okay so the answer is no right now right now the door is closed because of a family situation because of someone in a family I just dropped half of the deck doesn't matter doesn't really matter because I've already taken the cards I wanted so there's something to do with commitments. If the commitments are not marriage, uh, for some of you, it could be some sort of a, a deal or a business deal or some sort of an agreement, right? Um, and this is a big commitment, I'm going to say. I feel like I need to tell you this is going to be a big commitment on taking this journey. So let's see what the emperor is about. And I do apologize about the mess. But you know that uh, she's very special and she's a very good sign when she jumps up on the table. Where's Gaia? Gaia is sleeping under the table. She was up here before I opened Cam. Let's see what this emperor is about. Okay, we've got the six of wands. Someone that's successful or maybe hoping to succeed in whatever this is. It's going to happen suddenly and out of the blue because it's the Six of Wands. We've got loyalty in the Nine of Cups, someone that's devoted, loyal. So we're going to see big changes. Oh my goodness, this is the Ace of Cups and a meeting, a happy meeting that's going to uh, overflow your cup here. This is a wish fulfillment here. Some of you have been waiting for a meeting, a contract, a business deal that's stuck right now, but... Remember that the full moon, I would say, is going to change things up very suddenly and open up that journey because a decision has been made, let's say. But there's something about letting go, five of swords, letting go of conflict. Scorpio comes through here. Let's take three Lenormand because we can. For more information... Hi Agapi, hi Agapi, big mama, big mama Agapi, you're so sweet, just the tone of my voice, just listening to me, she's in heaven, she's in heaven, my beautiful Agapi, let's see what's going on, 13th of August, we've got a clover, a window of opportunity, for reciprocity, a payback, it's the Six of Pentacles, for Dharma, and this is luck, uh, this is happiness, opportunities, uh, beautiful. Yeah, someone's taking a risk here, someone's rolling the dice, they're going to gamble, oh my God, which is going to bring a change, it could bring um, 
because the snake is usually the enemy. It could bring jealousy. It could bring uh, another uh, female. There's uh, someone's willing to take a risk on what? The, the snake is moon in cancer. On something that was planned, now a risk is necessary. Because there could also be deception with a snake, but there's also craving for a deep, uh, intimate uh, attraction. There's also wisdom. Through a risk, some wisdom is going to come through uh, relative to some forbidden knowledge. Yes, yeah, something that was secretive um, is being found out, I would say, because there's nothing hidden under the sun. Um, the sun is here, and again, the sun can speak to someone's inner heart, someone's true emotions, or anything to do with someone's um, someone's life, because the sun, remember, is what we beam out um, to the world. The sun is clarity, it's healing, it's it's fun, it's romance, it's all these things, it's, it's confidence, it's the spirit, it's not hiding anything, it's not the moon, it's the sun. So, 30 days has September, April, June and November, which says August has 31 days, and around the 28th, 29th, 30th and 31st, we've got some really good aspects, some good aspects, so Venus, trining over Venus from Virgo, trining over to Uranus in Taurus. So good for practical matters because we're talking about earth signs, right? And we've got choices in the bridge. The bridge is choices, but it's also, yeah, quite risky. If you think of the bridges, I mean, if, if you miss, if you miss, you fall um, into that, um, into your death, let's say. So it's a big risk factor, I would say here. And it does speak to choices. Now, bridges can also speak to bridge, water under the bridge or um, needing to cross over a bridge, with, which is not easy. And it's got to do with communication and offer. Anything legal as well, anything spoken that's true, that was hidden because we've got the moon here. And it could relate to someone's personal home life, anything connected to the mother, uh, contracts, deals, marriage. Uh, this could be talk of someone that's decided to come out of a marriage or out of a contract or so many, so many f different things it can mean. So the message is journey. Let's look at the journey card. Number two. Two is also the high priestess. And remember, she is um, the high priestess. She is about strong intuition and a spiritual connection. Journey. Pack your bags. The journey card foretells upcoming travel or a shift in location. It may be simple as a vacation, a retreat, or class, or even a work-related trip. This card could also signal a move of residence or a job relocation. The upright position indicates that the plans should go off without a hitch. Still be clear about your motivations and mindful of logics. Yeah, be mindful of logics and, uh, sorry, uh, logistics, uh, because Mercury is retrograde. Be mindful of the little details, okay? Uh, all of life is a journey, and this card is telling you that you have some exciting and inspiring adventures ahead wow i want to see what number three is blossoming abundance that's where we're heading to and three is also the empress but we're not there yet we're on the journey the journey has begun wow what a message we got today absolutely gorgeous i love it for us all so my dear friends i think we'll leave it there i hope that this resonated um I hope that this has resonated and uh, the free love readings on YouTube, the elemental love readings for fire, earth, air and water, they're up on YouTube. The individual love readings, um, the individual ones are on Patreon, so um, do support us by joining us on Patreon. Lastly, I just want to take a couple of cards that speak to emotions. 
feelings, whether they're yours, whether they're um, whoever, whoever was in the reading today, whatever it speaks to you about. And remember, it's a general reading. We are reading for many people. So what are the emotions coming through today? We've got passionate. Even though it was in the reverse, doesn't matter. It's uh, like the Ace of Wands. Nothing, uh, nothing and miserable. Someone out there is feeling nothing and they're feeling miserable. They're still in the Three of Swords. Regrets, Nine of Swords, lots of worries, regrets and sleepless nights. Reconcile and make up. For some people there will be reconciliation after possible regrets after a breakup. That's it. Make yourself at home, Agapi. <laughs> make yourself at home. We've got a Queen of Cups here. Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces, the Queen of Hearts. We've got surprise. She's got an offer that's coming in. Something that's physical and tangible and she's going to get a surprise. And there's confusion with the Two of Swords. Choices as well. There's vengeful Ten of Swords. Some people are in their lower vibrational negative moments. And we've got a message of something stable. Um, many, many times I do see this uh this card as a message of physical travel or that there's enthusiasm uh, but also someone is still possibly also studying something for something long term nevertheless this is a message of promise here i'm going to say so lots of messages thank you so much everyone love and light don't forget to like share to um like share subscribe and uh, comment um it always helps the channel tomorrow we'll be back with the twin flame soulmate uh connection reading yes we will do yes please tomorrow so make sure you join us on the premiere and chat with us through the through the chat uh we'll, i'll be there okay so that's all for today uh enjoy your day everyone enjoy your day